Hi everyone, Sane Man here. This video is brought to you by a donation from Pablo, and here's what he has to say. Hi Sane Man, when men and women married for life in the past, women were trapped in the marriage, and the men confidently went about their business working on the homestead or in the factories knowing that he wasn't going to come home one day and his wife and children would be basically making a run for the border. And I'm not talking about Taco Bell. So women were stuck in their marriages up until the late 1960s and early 1970s, unless of course they found a man that they were happy with, or if he did something wrong, or she did something bad, pushing him over the edge to take things towards the divorce courts. If she was the bad party, then he gets to keep the kids, the house, and the lifestyle, and she's pretty much screwed. Now that we no longer have this option as men, how do we trap a woman in the modern age? There must be a way to find a wife and get married, and force her to stay there, much the way they did in the past. I'm a purple pill man looking for a bride, but I won't do it so long as it's not safe or as much of a sure thing as possible. I await your response. Well, Pablo, thanks for your donation as well as your topic. First of all, I hope you don't mind that I rewrote your question a bit and shortened it because I had a hard time understanding it. I understand where you're coming from on this issue because I've unsuccessfully tried trapping women in relationships in very subtle ways before, and it's always backfired in spectacular ways. The most traditional way is to date a woman that has three or four sexual marketplace levels below you. If you're the best that she can do, then the odds are pretty high that she's going to stick around with you because she can't trade you in for better. But in the end, she's still going to resent you for it. I did this in the past, and if I didn't have the option to leave those relationships, I would have been trapped there permanently, even if I was attracted or not attracted to that woman. To be honest, I was with her, but I felt obligated to be with her because I'd lost my virginity to her, and I'd still had religious guilt. I was absolutely miserable in getting tension headaches from the person that I was with. Sure, I was attracted to her to a point, but I didn't feel like the chemistry was completely there. In the past, religion and social norms would have kept me there and I literally would have had headaches for the rest of my life. Not a pleasant thing to think about. That's what many men go through with regards to the cheaper to keep a relationship. The woman has trapped the man because if he leaves willingly, his life is pretty much ruined. But if he stays, his wife might become a nag hag constantly bombarding him with emotional outbursts. Religious monogamy or even social monogamy backed up by the force of the state traps both men and women. The women weren't happy because they usually didn't get the man that had the right genes for them and the man that didn't behave the way that she really expected the man to behave. The man, on the other hand, was stuck sleeping with one woman his entire life. Pornography was illegal or pretty much hard to get. If he got together with prostitutes, people would often notice. Both men and women were pretty much trapped. Today women are not trapped at all and they pretty much come and go as they please. The same goes for men so long as we don't get married or move in with someone. All men going their own way want is not to feel trapped while still getting a little bit of intimacy from time to time. That's what women have right now and we only want the same type of equality. But women are using shame to keep us trapped and preventing us from realizing that we are the ones that have been caught after all. Love is that first trap that we fall for because we love women and women only receive it. And when we have that realization, that's when the red pill rage phase kicks in. We realize that love was a trap and we didn't even know it. Then we quickly see all the other things that women use to trap us. If we want to trap women again as men in the collective, we need to take away the vote, return to more social policing of human behavior, change the divorce laws back to the way they were, as well as set up a system where the state recognizes that children are best kept with fathers, otherwise you have an epidemic of single mothers raising criminals. That's if we want to do it on a society-wide scale. If we want to trap women on an individual basis and keep them around, then the best way to do that is with money. So long as you don't live with her and don't marry her and don't have any children, the two of you can maintain separate residences and you can keep her around not having to work as a sugar baby mistress. Sugaring is great for young attractive women that have the option to market themselves to many different men. But what about the 35 or 40 year old sugar baby? Her options are limited and she knows it. I'm sure that if you're a man that wants some sort of female companionship, I'm sure that you can do some sort of arrangement with a middle-aged woman. You provide for her lifestyle and she gives you sex, companionship, as well as an outlet for your love. Marriages are once business arrangements between families and that's almost where we need to go back to. Unfortunately, this strategy only works if you have a lot of money and can offer her the security of say fifty to $60,000 a year minimum to her. Basically a full-time salary that you're comfortable handing over to a 50-year-old has-been with saggy boobs. Not all that appealing, is it? The male the genes inside of us were the ones that took risks and tried new things to adapt to the situation because only about 40% of men in the past before civilization had the opportunity to reproduce, while about 80% of women were given that same chance. Before civilization, it was more about two women that were trapping the same man to provide protection and provision to them, and once we started building civilization, we went from polygamy to monogamy as the most optimal arrangement for both raising children as well as creating stable society socially. 
The children came first because they needed to be socialized right, to pass on good qualities to their children, and to create competent members in society. Obviously, that's not happening anymore. Instead of men and women being trapped to one another, today men in the state are trapped to women, and we have to do their bidding. The first big step that us men going our own way have taken is to refuse to be trapped by women. If enough of us do this like what's happening in Japan, then women will only have the state to fall back on, and eventually if men abandon the state by ghosting, or producing as little as possible, then the state will collapse due to lack of tax, and women won't have anyone trapped anymore. They will be the ones trapped instead. They wanted it all, and now they pretty much get nothing. Another option for the top 10-20% to 20 of males is to flaunt their money and good looks to catch a woman, and basically trap her, bang her, until her eyes leak semen, and then leave her at the nearest dog pound. You trap the woman short term, you mess around with her, and then you leave. So many guys out there have done such a thing to most women, that most women in relationships these days are now doing it to men. The woman gives a guy her passion, what he thinks is love, for a couple of months, and just as he's actually getting used to it, she pulls the rug from under him. It's almost as if many women do this sort of payback to so-called nicely behaved dudes, because the nice looking guys did it to them first. She dangles the steak right there in front of you, lets you eat a few slices, and then rips it off your plate and runs away. Men are easily trapped by love to stay in relationships, and women are not. Women in the past were trapped because they didn't actually have the physical skills to provide and protect for themselves, so they stuck it out with men because of the fear of dying alone, or simply dying from exposure or starvation. Men stuck around because of the fear of not having a woman to love, and the fear of being emotionally alone. But women no longer have to fear starvation, as well as invading armies filled with raping hordes, or even earning their own living. They are no longer trapped to the same extent. The only thing to trap them with is their desire to be with the best possible man. You can trap them with the surplus resources that they didn't earn on their own, or resources they would have actually had to work really hard to acquire. But men still feel the urge to love, have sex, and reproduce with women. But once you go through the red pill rage, that takes care of the love portion. Sex is partially taken care of by pornography, as well as augmented reality and sex robots which will be coming up next. Finally, we get to reproduction and it's still possible to have kids without a woman, but it's very expensive and involves a lot of planning, and you skip the fun part which is sex. But that's the part that women also obviously use to trap men with. Women use our own children, our own money, as well as sex and love to trap us. Realistically, the only thing we have over their heads is our sexual marketplace value if it's higher, and they can't do any better than us. But what happens if we get sick and can't provide for them, or we lose a limb? What happens if our sexual marketplace value that we use to trap them with goes down and now they start looking for another man? Even if you trap a woman, it's only a temporary thing, and she's always looking for the bigger, better deal, even if it's only at a subconscious level. I say let women have all the freedoms that they want, because without us, technically they're nothing. I say that we start focusing on pornography using technologies like Microsoft's HoloLens projection technology. If we can map out the body of a love doll, then we can project any woman's animation or still image onto that love doll to begin with. I'm putting a link in the description to this new technology so you can see its potential and know exactly what I'm talking about. I put three links in the description under HoloLens so you know exactly what I'm saying. With such technologies, we're almost able to film women from many different angles in the same room, and then we'll be able to have holographic strippers dancing right there in front of you, or you could possibly even see an orgy in your living room with virtual lesbians on your couch. Then all you have to do is add augmented reality love dolls with touch, feel, and the uncanny valley just melts away along with their clothing. At some point, we'll probably have reproduction through surrogacy and artificial wombs. But until then, we'll actually have to settle for having virtual sex. That will be enough for most men. They won't want love and they won't want children. Only a small number of men going their own way actually want kids from the surveys that I've done. Men are about to be free like no other time in history. Augmented reality will probably also be able to map out women in public and strip her clothes off in the augmented reality glasses. I'd like to see women try to stop something like that, but they'll probably just end up saying that you're raping them with technology. If anyone out there has any links to augmented reality porn that you'd like to share, then please do so in the comment section below, because I think we need to see where it's actually heading. For me, I've tried trapping women in the past, and it's always backfired. Women have tried trapping me, and it's backfired on them. All relationships are essentially battles of the sexes, with each side trying to take power from the other, and trying to spring a trap on the other as well. Left to their own devices, half the time men will win, and the other half the time women will win. The only way to ensure that the man always wins is to structure your society in a patriarchal way, where the responsibility of earning money, providing for the family, is basically thrust onto the man or the husband. It's a sort of sink or swim masculinity that we don't have today in the West. Instead, we have petty fighting between the sexes to see who's going to rule over the other person, or at the very least have the upper hand over the other. 
I remember meeting some old WW2 bomber pilots in Nevada as well as Arizona back in May of this year, and you could see that male look in their eye, that look where they're going to do whatever they wanted to do, and their wives and other people can't stop them. They had pure determinism in their eyes, and that's something that I don't see in the eyes of men these days in the West. It's more of a sad, beaten-down look that you see in most men's eyes these days. They're terrified because they're trapped by their wives or their jobs or their girlfriends or something else keeping them down. The last thing on their minds is trapping a woman to them because they themselves are already trapped and aren't going anywhere unless she throws them out. Pablo, there's no effective way to trap a woman to a man these days unless you actually rewrite the laws and restructure society. Unfortunately, since women got the vote, they now control the laws and the politicians, so we aren't going to see that. You chase the woman and in the end, she just ends up trapping you. That's the nature of things and the legality of things as well. Anyways, that's all I've got to say for today. Thanks again, Pablo, for your donation as well as your topic. Also, don't forget to check out the MGTOW mystery link and give this video a thumbs up. As for everyone else out there, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the marriage trap away. So enjoy the rest of your day and cheers.